June 28, 1993, in Fargo, North Dakota, Gina North, an 11-year-old girl with a heartwarming smile, was living her best summer life. She had spent the day at Island Park Pool, a local gathering spot where the community's children sought refuge from the summer heat. As the lifeguards began to pack up, signaling the pool's closing time, Gina and her friend knew it was time to head home. They strapped on their rollerblades, a quintessential 90s accessory, and began their journey back. Before parting ways, the girls decided to make a pit stop at a nearby convenience store. The digital clock above the counter read 10.30 p.m. A police officer, who was in the store at the time, would later recount how the girls seemed completely at ease, engrossed in their conversation and giggling as they picked out candy and soda. Exiting the store, they reached the intersection of North 15th Avenue and North 4th Street. This was their crossroads, the point where they would bid each other goodbye until the next day. Gina's friend watched as she skated away, her silhouette growing smaller with each turn of her rollerblade wheels. She rounded the corner, her form blending into the shadows of the dimly lit street. And then, nothing. Gina's friend waited, straining her ears for the familiar sound of rollerblades that would indicate Gina had reached her home safely. But that sound never came. Minutes turned into hours, and the sense of dread began to settle over Gina's family. Calls were made to neighbors, friends, anyone who might have seen her. But Gina had vanished as if swallowed by the night itself. Hobby's dad. I can't believe that, uh, you know, she's this, she was this close. I could crawl over my house in less than a minute. Gina North had disappeared, leaving behind a void that no one could fill. The story of Gina North's disappearance turned into a complex tapestry of questions, theories, and heart-wrenching what-ifs. It was a narrative punctuated by the agony of not knowing a story that would haunt the community for years to come. We were isolated. Things like that didn't happen here. We, we felt kind of like, well, this is, this is a good town. And yeah, we had some bad things happen, but nothing like this. The Fargo Police Department, in collaboration with the FBI, launched an all-encompassing investigation that shook the very core of the community. For weeks, Gina's innocent smile was everywhere on flyers, billboards, and TV screens, serving as a haunting reminder of the tragedy that had befallen this tight-knit community. Despite exhaustive efforts, including organized search parties and candlelight vigils, Gina remained missing, and the case went cold. However, the investigation took a shocking turn in January 1995, nearly two years after Gina's disappearance. Kyle Kenneth Bell, a neighbor with a dark criminal history was arrested on unrelated charges. During his time in custody, Bell confessed to the unthinkable. He admitted to abducting Gina, sexually assaulting her in his garage, and then killing her when she threatened to tell her parents. According to Bell, Gina's death was accidental. She slipped on her rollerblades after he struck her, leading to fatal injuries. He claimed to have disposed of her body in the Cheyenne River. Bell later recanted this confession, alleging that it had been coerced by authorities. But the police had damning evidence that tied him to Gina. A search of his residence unearthed a piece of rope and a cinder block, items that eerily matched those found during a search of the Cheyenne River. Furthermore, hairs discovered in Bell's truck were forensically matched to Gina's DNA. Bell was convicted of Gina's murder in 1999 and sentenced to life in prison. Despite these developments, the whereabouts of Gina's body remain unknown. Searches have been discontinued due to financial constraints and the challenging nature of the Cheyenne River. Gina's body was likely never found due to the heavy rain in the area, which caused flooding. Additionally, the Cheyenne River had sinkholes at the bottom, which were pitch dark, and her body could have easily fallen into one of them. This is so sweet. I hope Gina comes home. I appreciate you guys doing this for Gina. And if she was here, she would be so happy. Gina's mother passed away in 2009, her heart heavy with the unbearable weight of not knowing where her daughter lay. Bell's conviction was not the end of his story, however. Less than a month after his sentencing, he managed to escape from a prison transport van while being moved from New Mexico. 
the escape set off a nationwide manhunt, putting the entire country on high alert. The FBI, local law enforcement agencies, and even the U.S. Marshals were involved in the search. His face was plastered on every news channel, and America's Most Wanted featured him, urging the public to be vigilant. In January 2000, a tip from a viewer of America's Most Wanted led to Bell's capture in Dallas, Texas. He was arrested without incident and extradited back to North Dakota, where he was placed in a maximum security facility. This time, there would be no escape. Bell's recapture brought a second wave of relief to Gina's family and the community, but it was a relief tinged with the sadness of what could never be recovered. Gina herself. The aftermath of Gina North's disappearance is a complex tapestry of sorrow, advocacy, and lasting impact on a community forever changed. Her story didn't just end with the conviction of Kyle Kenneth Bell. It evolved into a cautionary tale that has been retold in various forms, books, documentaries, and news specials, each one keeping her memory alive and the quest for answers ongoing. Gina's mother, who had been a pillar of strength throughout the ordeal, passed away in 2009. Her heart was heavy with the unbearable weight of not knowing where her daughter lay. She had become a tireless advocate for missing children, channeling her grief into action. She worked closely with local organizations and even testified before legislative bodies, pushing for reforms in how missing children cases are handled. Her advocacy led to tangible changes, including the implementation of more effective alert systems and better coordination between law enforcement agencies. As a mother now, I'm not sure how my mom did that. I don't know how she did it. It's a lot of sadness and grief to push through. The emotional toll on Gina's family was immense. Her siblings grew up in the shadow of her absence, their lives irrevocably altered. Family gatherings were tinged with sadness, her empty chair a constant reminder of the gaping hole in their lives. Yet they too became advocates, often speaking at events to raise awareness about child safety and abduction. Despite the years that have passed, the case remains an open wound for the community, unsolved and unforgettable. Annual vigils are still held in Gina's memory, attended by old friends, family, and even strangers touched by her story. The local park where she used to play has a memorial bench, a quiet place where people can sit and reflect on the life that was tragically cut short.